Market update here on the 7th. So first thing I'm going to do is just go over a few possibilities or the possibilities for this move right here. First possibility is that we have a expanded flat. This would end up being a expanded flat down here to potentially like 365, 360. Remember we have the collar on JP Morgan and they probably would get a C wave back up here, potentially up to the August highs. From here, this would end up looking like A, B, C, like that. And then this would be wave one, two, three, four, and five, like that. That's the first possibility I see. That's the only way I see this move as finished. It was a very quick second wave, if it is a second wave, but it did retrace from, it did retrace past the 0.5 fib for a normal second wave. So it is a possibility, and you gotta remember about the JP Morgan collar trade by the 31st. This would have to be pretty explosive to the downside. That's the first possibility. Second possibility I think is more likely, and that is that we have, um, this is basically A, we're working on B, and then we get a C wave higher. Um, this would end up making the whole thing W, X, Y, and we'd be looking at potentially I don't know about 447 maybe maybe just up here to 424 but um, within this move right here this would end up being a B C like that and the reason that this B wave would take a long time is because the a wave takes about 22 days this B wave would probably take a little bit past OPEX and you'd probably come up here to like 412. And then we come down here into this demand zone around 388, 390 before going higher. Those are probably the two most likely scenarios I see. I don't see the five wave move I talked about yesterday because um, if this is a five wave move down to here, that doesn't make any sense. We can't have a five wave move and then go have another five wave move against it. It would have to start right here, but this is an ABC move. So I don't think a five wave move is possible. The two scenarios I laid out are probably the most likely, but I would lean towards the one, we come down here at 388 and then melt up to at least 424. So now going down to the supply and demand, just going on shorter time frames. We came down here after I made the video earlier and hit demand zone. That does not mean you need to buy right away when it hits demand. You could have and you could have made some decent gains. But um, I personally just sold some puts. I sold some 324, 394 puts. And the reason I did that is because I was not sure we bought them, but we were in demand. So the probability of us bouncing out of it is pretty high. And so for that reason, I sold some puts below the demand zone. And I'll probably just hold those for the next 17 days, assuming that we're going to go higher. Um, if we were to break below this and it was obvious it's going to be an impulse move, I might close those out. But I think there's low likelihood of that happening. So we'll see on that. For a bounce, we have some supply zones up here and I'll draw them again. So supply zone is right here. And we have a supply zone, I would say a supply zone right here. And then let's go to the daily. So on the daily, it's actually, I like the four hour better actually. 
because you can see this big one right here. There's probably a supply zone right here as well at 405.91. So there's a lot of supply zones, but uh, overall, I think that we could come down here to 395, 396. The reason I say that is because QQQ has not hit the four hour demand yet. It needs to come down here to 394.50. And so that's the reason why I think that SPY has a chance of not um, have bottomed yet. So I could see it bouncing up here to 401.97 and then going lower to like 395 before finally getting a big bounce. So something like this. So A, that, you gotta remember the timing of this is about two days. So you'd be looking for something into Wednesday, Thursday, maybe Friday, bottoming down here. And then uh, starting a five wave move up here, maybe into like OPEX or a little bit later. And then that would end up fulfilling the B wave and then we could finally go down, but it probably wouldn't go down that far. It'd probably just come down here to this demand zone right here. So again, QQQ has not um, gotten down to the demand zone. I think it could actually go down to 292. It's probably going to be something similar here. It could bounce up here to like 298 and then come down here lower. Um, that's my opinion on that. But again, I'm just, it's kind of in no man's land right now. So just kind of waiting for this to make a move one way uh, definitively. So you could, you know, buy puts or buy calls or whatever you're doing, ETFs. And Apple nailed the man zone. Kind of probably the same thing on Apple. Probably a bounce up here to 152.86 and then probably going to go lower. If it were to break though, this demand zone here at 150.40, we could be looking at something that could take us all the way back down here to 146.71. And so it really needs to hold 150.40. Amazon has not came down here to demand yet. I'm still holding my puts. I sold my Apple puts. Um, looking for 92.25 before a bounce. And yeah, let's go over Tesla. Tesla, I got my parallel lines drawn right here. This is like a WXY move, it looks like. They're all ABC pattern, so it's kind of like a double three. I think we finished the B wave here and actually drew this. Um, when the market opened, we actually nailed the supply zone here again and then came straight back down. I think it's headed for a minimum 184 all the way down to potentially 177, which is another demand zone down here. And then it should be ready to go higher. And if you remember a few videos ago, I talked about, I think this could actually go to like, somewhere around like 280 or 284. So you can see I'm still bullish in what I talked about like a week ago in that video about us going higher into the summer. I still think that's the most likely scenario. The dollar got stronger and it's still going up here um, based off of Powell saying he can raise interest rates, continue to raise interest rates um, indefinitely, I guess. Honestly, I didn't follow it that much. I was too busy looking at the charts. But if you remember, like a week or two ago, I talked about the 1.61 FIB is here at 105.94. So it looks like this could potentially just be finishing off a C wave up here. And that would um, let's see, 105. Yep, look at that. There is a supply zone right there. This candle right here, and then we get a big move down. So don't be surprised. We hit this area right here, and then we start a consolidation lower. Or, or that could be the B wave, but let's see how long it took. 
So this took like basically three or four months. This whole move would have to be again W X Y. And that would mean the dollar could not go past 92.41. But again, we don't know yet. This could just be wave A and get a pullback and then go higher. So both are possible, but I would think it would not go past 105.94. This candle right here is the... On the daily time frame, this candle right there, all the way up to 107.23, basically 107. But again, we have the 1.61 fib sitting there at the very bottom of this at 105, like 90. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I would look for. Some more downside, likely, but not that much. QQQ needs to come down a little bit more. SPY could probably bounce and then come down more as well. But eventually, I think that unless we get a third wave down, we're probably going to bounce up here to the supply zone eventually. And so going long is not the worst trade, but I think selling puts might be better because you have theta um, working in your favor as well. So that's pretty much it. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think is, are these videos helping with supply and demand? You understand it. Um, please subscribe so I can keep on doing these videos. Try to do one during the market and one after. And that's pretty much it. Leave me a comment and make sure you hit that like button. Have a good night.